Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, everybody who's a chemist typically breaks glassware at one point or another. And sometimes the glassware totally shatters and you must throw it out, but other times it breaks into two or three pieces, or maybe even one piece, and you can still fit it back together. However, the problem is, is of course, you can't just let it sit there because it's not connected. Now, you could take a propane torch to this and heat it up, but that typically warps the glass, um, and I find it causes it to crack most of the time, as it, and it just doesn't work very well. What I find much more effective, um, and still allows the use of the glass, as long as you don't heat it too hot or anything, is to actually epoxy it back together. So this is what I've done with a couple of different pieces of glassware, and you can actually end up with a very clean piece of new glass, um, you can still see the fracture line, but there's no epoxy residue. What we do is we line the pieces with epoxy, glue them into place, let them dry, and then take some acetone and wipe away the residual epoxy, because the acetone will actually dissolve the epoxy. This way we're left with a smooth, clean finish on the inside, no epoxy residue on the glass, and it's still totally useful as a beaker or whatever. Um, and can still be used just normal for transferring liquids or whatever or doing reactions in them as long as you don't heat them up. So this is a way where you can actually recycle your glass or more or less instead of throwing it out. So I'm going to go ahead, squirt out some epoxy and show you how to glue these two together and then um, yeah I'll meet you back in a moment. Okay so here in the center I've begun to mix the epoxy. This is 5 minute epoxy that you could buy at any dollar store. I bought this at Dollarama. So it sets in 5 minutes. Now this is actually dependent on how well you mix it. The better you mix it, the quicker it's going to set. So I highly recommend mixing this stuff around for one to two minutes thoroughly to make sure it's really mixed well. So when we apply it to the glass, we're not standing there for half an hour while it waits to set. We want it to set as fast as possible so we're not standing there and waiting. Now, the other thing is if your glassware is broken into two or more pieces, um, rather than gluing this to the main part of glass, we're going to glue the two pieces together like this first. Then we will glue them on after. This is far more effective and works much better. Because then you're not accidentally gluing it in the wrong position and trying to get them to all work around and everything. So um, that, that's at least what I do. So I'm going to go ahead, finish mixing this up, apply a little bit to each side, and push them together and hold them until they're bonded. Then I'll meet you back. Okay, so after you've held those first two pieces together until it sets, <clears throat> um, you can see that right here is the line, and it is most certainly not dry, as it is still quite flexible. During this stage, when it's tacky enough that it's going to hold itself together, but still flexible, what you want to do is, if you have one, more than one piece, you just want to make sure that it's going to fit your beaker, so that, or whatever, so when it dries, it um, will fit perfectly. Now, we don't have to wait for this to fully harden, just enough so that this isn't going to separate anymore. And a great way to test this is with the um, epoxy that you already did. This stuff, this epoxy right here on the paper is very, very hard. This stuff is probably almost ready to, for us to do the next part. For the next part, we'll squirt out some, apply it all around here, and do the exact same thing. And make sure to push it down so that it stays well and hold it together for that first five minutes. Um, until it sets and then we can let it fully cure and then we'll wash away the, the excess epoxy with the acetone afterwards um, Anyhow, so I'll finish up with that and then I'll meet you back Okay, so as you can see um, All the pieces have now been set and glued together But it looks a bit gummy because of all the epoxy which has rubbed everywhere and that doesn't look too good So instead what we're going to be doing uh, well, first we have to let it totally dry, but then we'll take the acetone and remove that. So we'll just take a bit of Kleenex, dab it with some acetone, and then remove all of that excess epoxy. But we have to make sure this is fully cured and hardened before we do so. And um, that's another reason why it's so important to be applying pressure while it sets, so there's not any big gaps. So the epoxy could actually get into the cracks and dissolve all the... Or sorry, the acetone could get into the cracks and actually dissolve all the epoxy in there. We don't want that happening. We want the epoxy in the cracks to be fine and only the epoxy on the surface to be removed. Anyhow, so I'm going to finish letting this fully cure and harden and move on to this one. Then I'll meet you guys back in an hour and, um, yeah, then we can remove it with the acetone. So we've turned on the fume hood to pull away the acetone papers when we uh, open up the can. But um, we're just going to take some acetone, pour it on a cloth, or I mean a uh, Kleenex, I mean you could use a cloth. We're just going to gently wipe along each line until it's totally smooth and any other 
uh, places the epoxy had touched. And just continuously do that until it feels smooth and complete across there and it feels like there's no more epoxy. So I'm going to do that to all of them and I'll meet you back. I also found this uh, other round button flask here which had broken in the neck in three pieces and um, so I just fixed that there. I'm going to do the same thing with that and uh, yeah, if you're wondering what this is, this is just like um, one of the things that you might find around an apple or something. I find they work really well to protect round bottom flasks. Um, anyhow, I'll finish this up then I'll meet you back. Okay, so it's done. And from here it actually doesn't really look like there's any fractures at all. However, upon closer inspection of course you can see them. But as you can see, after wiping away all the acetone, you're left with a relatively clear um, finish. It just looks like it's been broken. You can see yeah, basically just where it's been broken, it looks good. And because we were able to remove all the stuff from the inside, these will actually still work with the uh, 2440 glassware that these were with. Um, same with this one here, as you can see, just the fracture line. It just looks like it's been cracked. You can't actually tell that we ever epoxied it, which is excellent. And as you can see with the stopper, it fits perfectly. So, these cannot be, of course, used for um, your... Uh, the flask that you heat up for distillation or whatever, but of course this could be a receiving flask because it'll still fit into the glassware and it'll work just fine. Just don't heat them up because then the epoxy could melt or something and then you just end up ruining it. And finally the beaker, which looks relatively good. And uh, this can be used for most liquids and um, yeah. Uh, there's basically how to fix old glassware so that you don't end up throwing it out because that is a huge waste. So, um, yeah, hopefully you guys can do this instead of throwing out your glassware. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.